Okay, so let's see how much you know about working with square roots. Of course, square roots is a huge part of math, and if you don't understand a lot of the things that are involved in working with square roots, you will not be able to get a problem like this correct. But uh, let's go to take a look at the problem. What we have here is the square root of 4 sevenths times 14 over 3. Now, uh, there's no need to use a calculator for this problem because I'm not looking for a decimal estimate of the value of this product. What I'm looking for you to do is to simplify this expression. Okay, so if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm gonna solve this problem step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you need assistance in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so what is the answer? Uh, certainly, we don't want to use a calculator. So what would be the correct answer? Well, there is one correct answer, and let's go ahead and take a look at it right now. It is the following. So 2 times the square root of 6 over 3. Now, if you have something other than this, it's possible that you were on the right road to get the uh, uh, correct answer, but you stopped maybe midway, and that can still cause problems. In terms of um, uh, mathematics, if you turn in the answer, anything that's not this, okay, an answer other than this, uh, you would have uh, uh, gotten points off your answer. So a lot of you will not like that. So let's make sure we understand the complete process, which of course I'm gonna explain in just one second. But uh, for those of you that got this right, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face in A plus, a 100% and multiple stars. So you can brag to your friends and family that indeed you are a certified professional expert in the area of working with square roots and radicals because this um, symbol right here, most are gonna say, well, that's a square root symbol. Indeed it is, but we've referred to this also as a radical in math. So some of you out there that might be studying algebra, uh, you're going to be studying a unit or a chapter called radical expressions, radical equations. Uh, typically, you're not going to study a chapter or unit uh, called, you know, square root expressions because we we can have things other than square root, square roots, excuse me, like cube roots, etc. But uh, these properties and principles are more or less the same across the board when it comes to radicals. And uh, let's go ahead and get into the solution right now because we have actually quite a bit to cover here. Okay, so let me go ahead and um, first state what do you think we can do uh, here? Okay, so let's suppose. Uh, you may have forgotten how to work with square roots, or maybe you've never worked with square roots. What do you think our options are in order to manipulate this expression to simplify what's going on here? Well, there's two paths that we could take. You could do the following. So we have the square root of a product, right? We have this thing being multiplied by this thing. Well, we have two options. Okay, so what we could do, we could actually break up this one uh, big square root of these two uh, numbers being multiplied, these two fractions being multiplied together. Matter of fact, these two are what we call factors of some larger example or a larger number, excuse me. So for, uh, let's take a look at this example. Let's suppose I have the square root of 10. Now you can break up the square root of 10 in terms of its independent factors. Let me just kind of write this out. And this is what we call a property, one of several properties you need to know about square roots and radicals. So 10 factors of 10 could be like two times five, right? So we could break up the factors of this number, which of course two times five are factors of 10, into their own individual square roots, okay? So this is one key thing you need to understand about working with square roots. And uh, hopefully you understood this, but if you didn't, no big deal, uh, but we are going to need to use or understand this property. Okay, so again, if you have factors, you can break them up into individual square roots like this. So this is one option we could take in order to uh, kind of explore this problem, or we could just simply multiply these fractions, right? So we have 4 over 7 times 14 over 3, and if you know how to multiply fractions, all we have to do 
is multiply the respective numerators or and uh, denominators. So we have two options here. Which is the correct path? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at what is the best path forward. Now, there are other paths. Okay, uh, actually, before I show you um, the next step, is um, you could actually work with both of these expressions and still get to the right uh, answer. Okay, but really what you want to do is try to work in the most effective, efficient way. So I am going to uh, suggest that this is the correct path. And why am I going to say that? Well, because if you notice here, by multiplying the numerator and denominator, i.e. multiplying these two fractions together, maybe your eye uh, kind of said, you know what, there's a 14 up here in the numerator, there's a 7 down here in the denominator, and maybe I can kind of simplify this uh, fraction here by taking a 7 and dividing it into 14. So 14 divided by 7 is 2. So what's going on here? Well, hopefully, again, you know how to uh, work with fractions. So 14 is the same thing as 7 times 2, right? This is our 14 right here. So we have common factors in the numerator and denominator. So I could cross cancel one for one. And that leaves me with 4 times 2, okay, or 14 divided by uh, 7 is 2. Either way, you're going to end up with a 2 in the numerator. So 4 times 2 over 3 is what this simplifies to. And of course, 4 times 2 is 8. All right, so 4 times 2 over 3, this fraction right here, or this expression now, is the same thing as the square root of 8 over 3. All right, now, if you got this far, okay, and, this, and you said that this was your uh, answer, I would say that you were all definitely on the right track, but we are not done here, okay? Actually, there's a couple more steps that we need to take, so let's go ahead and do those steps right now, which, of course, is having you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I need your support. I need your support so I can support as many people as possible, uh, to include you, if you're interested in math or if you need to learn math, okay? Uh, so although I have a pretty substantial reach on YouTube, it's, you know, my reach or uh, my ability to reach people has come from years and years and years of people subscribing to my channel. So what I've been doing through the years is posting math videos. Matter of fact, I have well over 2,000 math videos from basic math to advanced math, not calculus and everything in between. And each uh, video that I post, I try to really to deliver uh, value to people that are going to uh, spend a little bit of their precious time with me. But anyways, if you like my content and you want to support my channel, the best way to do that is, hit, is to hit that subscribe button. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest content. Okay, so we have a, a, um, a couple more things we need to do here. Uh, to finish this problem. So we have the square root of 8 over 3. Well, uh, there's actually two things we need to address. Okay, so we have uh, the square root of 8 over 3. There is a, first of all, there is another property of square roots, and you can kind of see it in action right here. So just like the factors where I can write the square root, and we've got to uh, review this here real quick with you. So 2 times 5, the square root of 2 times 5, or the square root of 10, we can write this as individual uh, factors, right? The square root of 2 times the square root of 5. We have a similar property of square roots, and it kind of works this way. So the square root of a fraction, of course, a fraction has a numerator and denominator. We can write this as the individual square root of the numerator over the individual square root of the denominator. Okay, so again, these are properties, laws of square roots. There are others, and if you are a math student, you absolutely need to understand these because working with radicals and square roots is a huge part of math, especially algebra. Okay, so again, uh, there are a few things we need to address, but the first thing we need to understand, again, is that we could take this big square root of this fraction and write it as two individual square roots. So let's go ahead and address the first thing, and the first thing is right here, we can actually simplify this square root of 8. So let's go ahead and see how that is done. So you can see I already did the work here, and let's go ahead and uh, focus on this. So the square root of 8 what we want to do is think about this situation right here. We want to break up 8 into factors, okay? Now, the kind of factors that we're looking for, if they exist in a number, uh, are perfect square factors. Numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, etc. Because all these numbers here, I, when I take the square root of these numbers, I get these lovely numbers right here. I don't need any calculator. So I'm on the lookout for perfect square factors. So when I look at 8, I'm asking myself, 
Are there any perfect square factors uh, in eight? Well, of course there is because four times two is eight and four is a perfect square because when I take the square root of four, it is two. Okay, so let's just kind of follow the logic here. So I have the square root of eight. I can write that as a square root of four times two. Then I have this property here where I can break up uh, this one big square root, square root, excuse me, into two individual square roots. So I have the square root of four times the square root of two. And right here, the square root of four, I can take the square root of four, which of course is two. So this is really two times the square root of two. So we have this expression right here. And notice I still have my square root of three in the denominator. All right, so if you got this far, actually, again, you were um, on the right track and you were almost there, but we have a problem, okay? Let's gonna take a look at the problem. Uh, so we are not done and the problem is this right here. We cannot have a square root in the denominator, okay? Basically, it's not just a square root. Uh, let me kind of correct that. So if I had the if I had two over the square root of two over the square root of nine, for example, this is a square root and uh, this is okay because the square root of nine is three. This is what uh, we call a rational number. The problem with this number right here, the square root of three, this is an irrational number in mathematics. In other words, this is a non-terminating, non-repeating decimal. So if you go into your calculator and find the square root of three, you're gonna get a decimal that goes on and on and on. There is no repeating uh, pattern and it doesn't terminate. It goes on to infinity. That is not a situation that is allowed in mathematics. We never want to try to divide a number by an irrational number. So we need to rewrite this problem such that the square root of three is not in the denominator, but we, you know, this is the value of this number. Okay, so we can't change the value. We just need to rewrite it in such a way where we don't have this square root of three in the denominator. And what we're gonna do here is uh, called rationalizing the denominator. Again, these are skills that you learn and uh, typically you learn like in pre-algebra or algebra one. And if you need help with uh, radicals or square roots and uh, you know things that are a little bit more involved than what I'm covering here, well, I'm gonna leave links to all my main courses, pre-algebra, algebra one. I would suggest algebra one for those of you that are taking algebra, but uh, you'll find my other courses there. And by the way, if some of you are like, you know, I'm not even a math student, you know, I took math years ago, but you might, you know, you might still be interested in learning mathematics. Check out my new course called my Math Skills Rebuilder course. I teach you a ton of uh, algebra, geometry. It's just a hodgepodge, of course, but it'll give you a very well-rounded education to include working with square roots. Okay, so how are we going to address this? Well, what we need to do again is called uh, do something called rationalizing the denominator. That's just a fancy term for fixing up this situation right here, such that we don't have a square root of three in the denominator. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our value here and multiply it by one. So uh, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this doesn't look like a one to me. Well, in fact, it is a one, right? So if I take any number and I multiply it by one, like seven times one, what is the answer? It is seven. This is what we call the multiplicative identity. But let's take a look at this right here. I'm gonna multiply this expression by the square root of three over the square root of three. Now the square root of three divided by the square root of three, anything divided by itself is one. So I'm not uh, changing the value here. Okay, we gotta be careful here that we're not you know, uh, creating a different value. It's okay to multiply this entire thing by one, but uh, the problem is gonna look differently. Now, why did I uh, choose the square root of three over the square root of three? Well, when you're rationalizing the, denom the denominator, what you wanna do is take the square root that you're trying to get rid of. So here I'm trying to get rid of the square root of three. So we're gonna multiply the denominator by the square root of three, but we also need to multiply the numerator by the square root of three as well. Okay, so if that makes sense, let's just go ahead and do the math. Now, so here we have two times the square root of two times the square root of three. Again, we're multiplying fractions. So the square root of two times the square root of three, we can write this you remember we have factors here. You can write these in individual square roots or you could put these individual square roots, uh, the factors or these numbers under one big square root like this. Okay, so I'm kind of just uh, uh, in an informal way showing you these properties. But really what I'm um, you know, discussing 
uh, if you have not learned this, you know, you really should have some like formal course of instruction just to kind of get this down. But I think most of you can kind of see the pattern here. Okay, so we have the square root of two times the square root of three. We can write that under one big square root. So that would be the square root of two times three. And of course we have this two right here in front of these two factors, uh, these two square roots. So this would be two times the square root of two times three over the square root of three times the square root of three. Same principle, I can write that as a square root of uh, one big square root over three times three. Okay, so now let's go ahead and clean this up. And what we have is two times the square root of, uh, square root of two times three, which of course is six. So that's two times the square root of six. And then now I have the square root of three times three. Three times three is nine. So the square root of nine is three. And here is our final answer. Notice I do not have a square root in the denominator. It's, it's perfectly fine to have a square root in the numerator. But remember, when you have a square root like earlier uh, in the problem, we had the square root of 8. You always have to simplify uh, square roots such that uh, there are no more perfect factors in them. So, for example, if I had the square root of 8 over 3, you might say, oh, we're completely done here. No, indeed, we are not, because here we need to take out those perfect squares. So we have 4 times 2 over uh, 3. So this is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 2 over 3. So our final answer will be 2 square root of 2 over 3. All right, so a problem like this can be a little bit deceiving because it may not seem like there is too many steps to take, but in fact, you know, you do really have to uh, know these properties of square roots and just got to take your time and focus. And remember, the whole purpose of this problem was to work with the properties and laws and rules of square roots. What we don't want to do is just multiply these two numbers together and then go to our calculator and find the square root of that value. Of course, there are times when you need to do that. Let's say if you're in a science class or if you're um, asked to find an approximate value of this. But typically, uh, for those of you that are math students, or if you want to learn math, what your math teacher is interested in seeing is your knowledge and skills to work with radicals and square roots. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.